Giggity. I'll have to cut some chunks. For you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Scare Your Friends, the only podcast on the internet that makes you say, oh, oh what am I doing <laughs> with my life? That is the most accurate one so far. You know what, guys? I feel like it's a good time to record some Scare Your Friends in, in, in um, ah, ah, IRL, IRL, um, it is midnight, right on the nose, literally Did midnight. you really just use the fucking acronym IRL? Yeah. I'm joined by my friends Dan. Uh, Shout out. In real life, it's 12, whatever. Cringe. I'm trying to do this before. And now it's 12 1. Now the moment's ruined. Damn it, Dan. Whatever. Oh. Fuck it. Dan, what, what's your thing? Say hi. You sloth. You sloth. <laughs> I do love a good sloth. Um, hello. Good, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Mm. This Levios is Dan in real life. <laughs> IRL? Leviosa. 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 <laughs> How are you today, Dylan? I am spectacular. Good. You know, talking comics before. Good. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, USA just won a lot of gold. Yay, date in the video. Yeah, now our economy is going to be saved with all that gold. <laughs> How, what's up, Nate? <laughs> I'm sorry, do you not support your country in their Olympic teams? Oh, here we go. I like to be um, neutral in these things, Dylan. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, <laughs> exactly. If you're, if you're neutral, then the terrorists win, John. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shame <Shavery>. me. <laughs> Spring theory. to get political. <laughs> hey, check out um, RodhamEmail.com to protect your emails. Hey, okay, uh, you were neutral. He added the comment. <laughs> Fuck. Um, I can't, let's not get political. No, <laughs> Nate, quick, tell me how you are. Oh, I'm like comments of just that. fine. It's been weeks since they last heard from you. Oh, absolutely. You know, it was it was a long week. I um I have finally sat down and I don't know where I'm going with this. What are we reading? <laughs> <laughs> Red Bear was good, guys, right? Holy uh, shit. we haven't gone yet, but <laughs> ah! <laughs> I had to take the thing. Oh my god! Whatever. <laughs> All right, it doesn't matter. Okay, so today we are reading a interesting looking story titled "The Strangest Security Tape I've Ever Seen." What do you think this story will be about? Is it, does subtlety? It some, does it have something I think to do with the tape? I think it's about a kid who stumbles upon an old security room, pops the tape out, looks at it, and goes, "Huh." And then leaves. <laughs> I think this is a uh, VHS. VHS. <laughs> VH. What's that? It's a, a okay. compilation of horror. Oh, films. way to date us. The first one's good. It's what? Movie. What? <laughs> what? I'm 22. Of course, I know what a VHS is. That is a joke. I because we haven't. I don't know. DVDs are out. Slash world. Okay, who's starting, John? <laughs> no, this store. Oh man, this podcast sucks. It's pretty bad. Like, comment, it's your, subscribe. You gotta remember, no, it's your Nate, I swear to God, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> it's your podcast. IRL, I will kill you. <laughs> oh, cringe. It's so it's bad. His podcast, it's his podcast. Really but he loving. He's gracious enough to invite us on to pull so the we can strings. Just be fucking terrible. <laughs> It's it's he's pulling the strings. But apparently, this. people love it. Is this what you want, viewers? Us just babbling nonsensically for Make 20 sure you comment minutes? and you subscribe. You shut up, me! <laughs> shut your not, mouth! It's not funny. It's not funny if you keep saying it. You're, You're making it funny. You gotta though. spread it out a little bit. That way, it's not. It's like I don't know. Just like comment. And I'm subscribe. gonna fuck Dylan. I'm going to. I might just restart the fucking thing. <laughs> I'm not going to now. It's too late. We're doing you can't deep. do that. You don't even like Bob Ross. John, please start don't the goddamn you fucking story. Dare again. Okay. You know what? So, all right. Seriously, thoughts here, fucking Dylan. What do you think's gonna happen? What do you think of the story? Is it? Do you think this is not subtle at all? Or do you think it is subtle enough that you are curious? Are you curious about this tape um, right now? Is there security footage on it? Nate, are you <laughs> curious about this? Are you kidding me? This is, a more subtle, this is a more subtle title than my dead girlfriend keeps messaging me on Facebook. <laughs> I'm not even excited for this at all. This this Fuck. title makes it seem like shit. I'm not even kidding. Wow. What do you think it's going to be? All right. I don't know. Somebody's going to be watching some spoopy security <laughs> tapes? Skull <laughs> Trumpet. Gosh. Don't joke about Skull Trumpet. We're making some really bad intros here, guys. One, two, what are you, fucking Will? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do it. Shout out to Will. <laughs> Shout out to Will, wherever you he us. may be. Uh, what the fuck is your name, author? You are, the author is Powerhawk is Mash. Powerhawk oh, Mash. Fucking sick name. Powerhawk Mash! So he, wrote the, like he or she movie. wrote this, uh, so let's do it. The strangest security tape I've ever seen. Here we go. You never saw it. 
I worked. I work at a gas station in rural Pennsylvania. It's a boring job, but it's pretty easy and it pays all right. A few weeks ago, this new guy started. I'll call him Jeremy. So far off. Bill J. A great fucking start. <laughs> Listen, man. Well, after that, anything's better than this conversation. Jeremy spoke. Hey, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Jeremy is J. Jeremy is weird. Like Dylan. He's about 25 nice. or 26, and he hardly speaks. Well, not like Dylan. <laughs> but he ha- but he's got the creepiest laugh I've ever heard. <laughs> like oh. Dylan, I guess. <laughs> this is the Jeremy from the Pearl Jam song. <laughs> My Pearl boss Jam. and I noticed this, but it's never been a problem. So there's not much we can really do about it. Customers have never really complained about him, and he's always done his job fairly well. Up until a few weeks ago, anyway. That's when things started to go missing. Employee theft can be a problem at any business that sells consumer goods. And there's only one person working at a time at this gas station. It's a pretty small place. About two weeks ago, my boss started noticing that we were short on motor oil. At first, it was a few containers at a time. Then shelves and boxes from the back room. Pretty soon, entire shipments would just be gone the day after we got them. And it would always be right after Jeremy's shifts. My boss has checked the security camera tapes from every night he worked, but he could never catch him in the act. Jeremy would lock up at closing, then the motor oil would be gone the next day. What are we thinking? He's Intriguing? Selling, or? He's selling it to terrorists. He's selling it to a guy. He's a little shit feet of Damn, me. I was thinking the same thing. I didn't Political. want to say it then. It's a troll lighten up. Jesus Christ. Lighten up, Francis. Jesus. Uh, Who's Francis? I was a you. What does that even mean? His name is Ajax. Ajax? <laughs> what movie was that from? The I think we've reached too low here, That's folks. Cool. What? No, 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 no. 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 What was it from? God, okay, uh, stop, stop, stop. stop. I asked a question. Is this intriguing you yet? No, I'm no, bored no. as fuck reading this. It sounds like a day at... Dan's brother's job. It's, yeah, it's so generic. Well, I mean, all right, maybe we can use your expertise, Dan, because you worked at. I a, did work at, at a gas there. station. I yeah. did technically. I worked there. Loser. Um, I'm just kidding. No, no. I'm sorry. I worked more than one day. Oh, fuck, fuck you. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean we didn't really get. It was mostly gas. We didn't really get motor oil in. But, okay. Um, I mean, it, it'd be kind of hard to steal something like that. I mean, if really? it's coming in... You roll it down a hill. Well, I mean, it depends. Well, no, not really, because we have, like, motor oil and cans. Have you ever had issues? Shelf. Has there ever been, like, problems similar to this where stuff just goes missing and you can't really... Theft, yes, but not with, like, Customer. oil or not gas with employees. or anything like that. Um, employees? Yeah, well, not at, uh, not at, not at uh, the gas station I worked at, but when we used to work at... At the dollar store. You so Dan and Dylan used to work shit? at uh, was yeah. it Dollar Tree. That's how I mean, we can met. say that. That's a that's a yeah. That's a you can say deals if that doesn't exist. Yeah, whatever. That's mm-hmm. how. That's actually how me and Dylan met. Um, but we we yeah. knew this kid, this mutual friend Scott, who would just basically just steal fruit from there all the time. Like oh. just eat it in the aisle. Are and you just serious? Leave the yeah. Ra- yeah. Oh, no, and you, you find candy wrappers the next yeah. day. What like, a piece oh. of shit. All the time. <laughs> It's a like fucking dollar. Do- yeah, who cares? But it's a dollar. Like you can't just pay the fucking dollar. Like, well, but then you see, like, oh, I had that last week. Oh, I had that two weeks ago. Yeah, he would just leave it like behind shelves and stuff. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's continue. What a um, dick. Nate, want to go? Uh, my boss usually. All just... right. Okay. My boss usually takes the tape home with him try, to try and catch Jeremy stealing. But his daughter had a softball game last night, so he asked me to watch the tape for him. He offered me to play. Uh, offered to pay me over time under the table, so obviously I took that offer. There are three cameras, so he gave me three different tapes to check. I figured it would be a long night, but I'm trying to save up for my uh, for vacation. So I really needed the money. I took the tapes home, popped them into the old VCR, and sat back. Hmm. Does this sound like a lot like Five Nights at Freddy's? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's not in a security room. He goes home with the tapes. There's no threat. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's... Four took, or was it three? three One of them place. took place in the goddamn house. There's no immediate danger to him, though, I checking tapes. So. You don't know that. Oh, it was the fourth one. <laughs> Freddy well, will come I'm out a, and get aren't them. Aren't you no like matter. the FNAF aficionado, John? You know no. all the lore and shit. No, I stopped following after three. Fuck oh, that okay. noise. Oh, my fuck. Once, oh. The, once the nightmare started, I was like, uh, <laughs> No. Yeah, it was pretty. Whatever. Oh, oh, no, no. As a man, at least it died. I was like, no, I, it's not dead yet. No. Five's coming out. Welcome to the crap. Five and, and the, the RPG. And a book. We no, the book. book. We RPG out. To anyone oh, it's already out? out? Yeah, it failed miserably. She apologize to for anyone who likes Five Nights Freddy's, but I'm sorry. You're fucking crazy. FNAF. I mean, I think... Uh, wait, I'm not going to get into a FNAF conversation. Wait, wait. I have a creepypasta related. 
Is there a FNAF of creepy Of course pasta? there is. Of course <laughs> there is. Of course there is. Of course. Nuts. People can't resist. Yeah, you know. There's, cre- there's, there's freaking Five Nights at Freddy's anything. All right, whatever. Let's just continue. Five Nights at Freddy's. Don't continue with this paragraph. I'll give it to Dan. Oh. I'll give it to Dan. All right, Dan, say two. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Two days ago, the last time he worked, Jeremy started at 4 p.m. Everything seemed pretty normal at first. He counted up his drawers, switched off with the girl who was working before him, and waited for a customer. The first person who came in was Mrs. Templeton. The timestamp on the video read 403, a regular. She picked up her cigarettes and her newspaper and paid with a 20. Nothing unusual there. I'm calling bullshit, okay? She paid with 20. Cigarettes are like $40. Easy. <laughs> um, nothing unusual. The next customer was some local guy named Ron. He drives a motorcycle, usually comes in every few days. He filled up his tank, got a bag of beef jerky, paid with his credit card, and then left. Next was some guy with a cowboy hat. I'd never seen him before, but we get plenty of strangers passing through, just like any gas station. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel, paid with a $100 bill, and went on his way. I sat back inside. The only thing more boring than doing this job is watching someone else do it. Okay. I'll, I'll, all right. Uh, where are we? Go ahead, Dill. My, my, boss, boss's my, boss, my boss's offer was enough to keep me watching, though, so I left the tape on. Everything seemed pretty normal. I had a feeling that if Jeremy was stealing motor oil, we knew we were suspicious of him by now. I didn't expect him to be dumb enough to let us catch him on camera. Things stayed boring and routine until about 5 o'clock. At 5.03, Mrs. Templeton came back in. She must have forgotten something, but she didn't. She bought the same pack of cigarettes as before and the same newspaper. She paid with another 20. That's odd, I thought, but then again, she's a little absent-minded. I thought Jeremy should have told her she already got her smokes, but it's not against the rules to sell somebody the same thing twice. That's when Ron came in again. He bought another tank of gas for his motorcycle again. I later checked the outdoor camera because I thought maybe he had another car he wanted to fill up. And the same pack of beef jerky. He paid with his credit card again. Hmm. Hmm. So they came back in to get the exact same things. I know Dan's kind of looking a little confused. That's weird. Terrifying. Yeah, it's a little creepy. Terrifying. It's the imps pulling the strings. (laughs) Oh, you shut up. It's terrifying (laughs) terrorists. It's terrifying. Alright. Right. Um, no big deal. deal. Okay. No big deal. I figured that this was just a weird coincidence. Mrs. Templeton was forgetful, and Ron probably owns more than one Harley. That's when the guy in the cowboy hat came back in. I felt a chill run down my spine. Don't get Diesel. Don't get Diesel. I found myself whispering to myself in my empty living room. But he did. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel and paid with another $100 bill. Every move he made was identical to his first visit, right down to the way he scratched his nose before he walked out. Either this guy is rich, owns a lot of trucks, and just moved into town, or something really bizarre was happening, I kept watching. It's high noon. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Can you get us out of the mood anymore? (laughs) Jesus. It sounded like a McCree thing. I had to. No. No Overwatch speak. You shouldn't have even said that. Uh, that. Every customer for the next hour was the same as before. Every single one. I was seriously freaked out. And then at 6.03, Mrs. Templeton walked back in. She bought her cigars and a newspaper again. And paid with Come on. And paid with a 20 again. I thought I was going to lose it. I only watched another half hour before I started fast-forwarding through the rest. It was all the same. Every customer would come in at the exact same times, exactly one hour apart. Oh, this is just like the scene from Speed where he, they record themselves in the bus. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, they, the bus and they kept and replaying over. over and over again the same freaking time. And he didn't. The guy was like, the bad guy was like, well, they're just standing there doing nothing. We have to make sure this bus doesn't go under forty miles an hour; it'll explode. Shout out to Wait, have you, have you seen that Shout movie, out John? to the Reeves. Yeah. Have you the seen that one... movie Speed? Yes, I have. Yeah, from the part where they're replaying it over and over again, and then he realizes to cruise control. Get out! Oh God, leave. <laughs> Nate, let's go. Now I know what you're thinking. That sneaky motherfucker Jeremy had messed with the tapes. God damn it! Exactly. He had uh, he had run a loop of this first hour uh, of his first hour of business over and over. That uh, that wasn't the case. There are window. Oh my gosh. There are windows around the cash register area that the camera covers, and I watched the sunlight fade as time ran on. Jeremy's routine didn't loop over. He swept, mopped, restocked, and he did his duties exactly how you would expect. But the same customers kept coming in. 
I was panicking at this point. Something was seriously wrong with what I was seeing, and I had no explanation for it. I skipped ahead to see uh, when he locked up. Uh, oh my gosh! I skipped ahead when he locked up and walked out to his car. He hadn't stolen anything, but I kept watching just to make sure. I fast forwarded one last time to about midnight. Exactly twelve oh three. Out of nowhere, Jeremy's face pops up on camera. Oh God! I don't mean he moved his head into view. I mean that one second the store was empty, and the next second his face was all I could see. He wasn't looking at the camera. He was looking at me. I was sure of it. I screamed and I fumbled for the remote. By the time I grabbed it, he was gone. Just as soon as he had left one frame, he was there. The next, he wasn't. My hands were shaking like crazy, but I popped another tape. The other indoor camera shows the back area by the cash register, and I would be able to see how he got up to put his face in the camera like that. I skipped ahead to 1203, but there was nothing. I would have been able to see him standing on the chair or something on this tape, but he wasn't there. I didn't see him enter the store at all after he left. It's like he wasn't really there. He doesn't know the security code and no alarms were triggered that night after he locked up. What I did see, however, was that at 12.03 the motor oil vanished off the shelf. <laughs> all of it. Same as Jeremy's face. One second it was there and the next it wasn't. I turned that tape off and went to bed, but I didn't get a wink of sleep. My body is exhausted right now, but my mind is racing. That tape was undoubtedly the creepiest, most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. Ooh. It's like fucking Groundhog Day. <laughs> Dude, welcome to Voodoo, man. What are we thinking? <laughs> he's, a, he's in the he's in the uh, cahoots with the Voodoo. It's pretty demons. spooky. Jeremy Spooky. <laughs> Shout out to Pearl Jam. Shout out to Eddie Vedder. Um, but no, I I so far I think it's it's pretty spooky. Yeah, it's I a mean, little spooky. Yeah, it's spooky. I like it. Yeah. I like the spooky uh, vibe. Yeah. I just, I th what the, what's that freaking movie with the online shit? What do you mean? Oh, the um, face unfriended. Unfriended. It's kind of like that. But what? Except believable. Except believable. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, but what the fuck would? Why is his head in the blender? Why steal motor oil though? Like, what the fuck could possibly? We'll find I don't, I don't out. know. I guess a decent payoff because this is kind of fucking stupid. No, you need it's your just motor something oil. Something to steal. I guess. I work in a few hours. My boss asked me to bring the tapes back and in and let him know what I found. But really, what the hell am I going to say? Jeremy works the night shift tonight, directly after me, and the, the plan is for my boss to come in just before I leave and confront him with me, as I'm supposed to be the one who caught him stealing. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I suppose I'll have to show my boss the tapes, but I don't want to watch them with him. I never want to see something like that again. I can't get the image of, of Jeremy just smiling directly into the camera out of my mind. It was the creepiest look I've ever seen on another, on another human being's face. Wait, is uh, he tall and lanky too? Just finish. Oh wait, wait, wait! Hold I, on. Uh, wait, he. I didn't recall them saying that he was smiling at the camera. Did, yeah, I don't did. remember. I don't think they he did. He just looked at the camera like he was looking at. Mm, yeah. Maybe he's describing it now, but yeah, I guess he looked at the camera. Yeah. Maybe and, he was smiling. Anyway, I'm gonna try again to get some last minute sleep before I have to go in and deal with this. I'll let you guys know what happens. So this is an update story, by the way. It's uh, like a blog thing. So this is an update. Uh, Two forty nine p.m. Updating from my phone. Apologies in advance for errors. My boss just finished watching the last of the tapes. I told him what to expect, but you can't really prepare someone for something like that. He's scared shitless. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I still am too. And Jeremy is due to come in at four. We've got a little over an hour to get our shit together, but neither one of us knows what to say to him. Is he just a fucked up guy that likes to steal motor oil and scare the shit out of people? Or is he something else? I don't know if this is crazy, but does anyone think he could have anything to do with the time loop? I mean, I imagine so, yeah. <laughs> my boss said he would, he would never notice anything... Sorry. My boss said he never noticed anything like that in the other tapes. But the way he popped up in this one made me think that he knew I would be watching. It's like he wanted me to see what he can do. Like he was showing off or something. The way he smiled into the camera was like a little kid showing you a sandcastle they just built or something. I don't know. I'm the author, and I just really want you to feel like <laughs> this is scary. I'm sorry. What it really says is, I don't know. I probably sound crazy. I sure feel that part. I sure, I sure feel the part. I'm going to talk to my boss some more. We have to calm ourselves down and figure out how to handle this. I'll update again. But I have a really bad feeling about how we're going to play this out. Update. 
4.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone, is, his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. Uh, 5.33. Oh, no sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 6.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 7.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 8.50... Uh, 8.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone has been disconnected. By the way, we're calling the police. <laughs> Fuck. Um, what do we? Do? <laughs> what do you do with a drunken sailor? What the fuck? This has like a. This here has, like a. I see this, and then also I see a face of Slenderman for some reason. <laughs> Don't put it in. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm being right. dead on, dead on ball serious. Dead um, on ball serious. All right. Well, because up. like when you know when you look at Slenderman, the thing goes ee, like it fizzes out. Ee. You know how the video fi- like fizzes out and stuff. <laughs> like I see that when the kid looked at the thing, looked at the. Camera. I like that idea. I'm sorry. I really like that idea where you're just walking in the woods. Oh my god! I think the Slenderman's after me, and you turn around and you just see him in the distance, like. <laughs> no, but you know how it fizzes out like when you see it. When yeah, you get I, I got it. Right. That's why I see when he's looking at the camera. Also, goes and then yeah, yeah, okay. and then tentacle attack. <laughs> oh, and then we can't talk about the rest of that story. <laughs> All right, uh, Nate, do you want to take the update? At, so to say, update. You know. Update ten fifty eight p.m. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! I just got home and saw my previous updates. Things make less sense now than ever. Here's what I can tell you: I went to work. Jeremy never showed up. My boss and I decided to call the police, as you're well aware. When I picked up the phone, though, the sun went out. I shit you not, that's what I thought happened. Apparently, I blacked out for exactly five hours because when I looked uh, at the clock, it was 9:33. I think I got stuck in Jeremy's time loop. And th- then I snapped out of it uh, at the exact point I blacked out, if that makes sense. But that's when things got really weird. My boss was right next to me when I blacked out, ready to corab- corroborate. 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 I think that's spelled. Is that correct? That is spelled correctly. Is okay. Okay. Oh, okay. My story to the cops. When I came to the phone, my ha- well, when I came to, the phone was in my hand, but it was not dead. It was dead. Not even a dial tone. My boss was still right there. But he wasn't moving. He was standing up, but frozen. I looked at the clock again, and it wasn't moving. The second hand was stuck on the 12. It was 9.33 exactly. The clock on the register computer screen wasn't moving either. My phone was frozen. There was e- uh, even a customer at the register waiting for my boss to get to, uh, get him cigarettes. I'm telling. I'm betting that wouldn't. Oh, I'm betting that would have uh, been his fifth pack of the day. I got the fuck out of there. Didn't lock up, didn't turn the lights off, and sorry guys, I didn't grab the security kit tapes to upload on the internet. Believe me, that was the last thing on my mind. The gas station was on a major highway and cars were parked all along it. Except they weren't parked, they were frozen. The people inside were sitting still as wax statues. I got my car and prayed that it would start. Thankfully it did. About halfway home, time started up again. The static from the radio turned into music like it's supposed to, and from what I could tell by listening to the host talk in between songs, no one noticed the time freeze, or whatever it was. I was the only one. Well, I'm sure Jeremy noticed as well. I still have no clue where he is or what he's doing. I'm hiding in my room and calling the police again in the morning. I don't know if I ever got through to them before, or if I did, whether they took me seriously. I'm scared for my life at this point. I'll update tomorrow if I can. Why in the morning? Because it happens at, I guess, four. Well, he, mm, the time loop. This is fucking weird. What is with these science fiction stories that you bring it out for us? Yeah. Um, the problem I have with this, right? Anti flash. Because I, I have read this, so yeah. I, I've, but it's been a while since I read this. When he was talking earlier about Jeremy's time loop, I thought, like, I was thinking, like, the cameras. Like, oh, he might have done something. No, he's to fuck literally, like, like. But no, it's like, he's time. like fucking Neo. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Sex criminals. He goes to the bathroom, jerks off, and freezes time for five uh, motor hours. Motor oil. Uh, it's a one second podcast in a row. He used this in his loop. That's what he's still in the motor oil. He's the anti flash. <laughs> Final um, update: ten thirty-three a.m. I finally fell asleep last night around four. I have no idea how I did it. I guess exhaustion finally got the best of me. This morning, I woke up to my phone ringing. It was my boss. He'd been calling me since about six. He woke up when time turned back on last night and immediately called the cops. You gotta say it better than that, man. I don't know. That's just weird to me. 
You woke up when time turned back on like you usually do. <laughs> okay. They know. came ba- they came by to see what was wrong and he told them everything. The police around here are all small time guys. They were more concerned about with the missing motor oil than anything. But my boss figured he would take it as long as he had their attention. They decided to go looking for Jeremy. We keep all of our employees' applications on file, and since Jeremy just started working here, he was easy to find. They checked the address on it and headed over to his house. You're not going to believe what they found. Oh, boy. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Front loading. <laughs> it's a horror story. <laughs> Front loading. Take it away, John. No. <laughs> There you go. Oh, 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 you want me to read? <laughs> yeah. They're not going to believe what they found. The address Jeremy listed on his application was an empty lot, or at least now it is. There used to be a house there, but it burnt down in 1993. Being a small town, almost everyone remembers that fire. A family of four uh, used to live in that, used to live their way back when. I, I botched that. A family of four used to live there way back when. Rumor has it that they had a strange son who they never really talked about. But I can't say for sure if that's true. What I can say is true is that after an insurance investigation, the fire was ruled an arson. The entire house was soaked in oil and torched with a Molotov cocktail. The entire family was sleeping when it happened. None of them survived. They never caught the guy who did it. Rumor has it that when they tried to contact the estranged son, no one could find him. Anyway, my boss called and told me this, and I freaked out. Wait, what? You, your boss called and... Oh, about the empty lot. In front, and I freaked out. Okay. Uh, then he asked me to come to the gas station. What, are you crazy? I said. But he assured me that there were cops there with him. Then he dropped a bomb. The FBI were also in town, and they were going to talk to me one way or another, so I might as well come in. It was about 7.15, and I wanted to go back to bed, but I figured I wouldn't be able to sleep much more anyway, so I went down. Okay. Four men in suits greeted me and told me to have a seat. We went over everything two or three times until they got uh, all the details down. I told them about Jeremy, the security tape, last night at work, everything. Finally, after I finished, one of the agents said, Oh, Christ, we've got another one, of our, uh, one, on one, nah, another one on our hands. Then they made me, a, uh, made me sign a bunch of papers saying I wouldn't tell anyone about what happened, so I can't say much anymore. Uh, say much more. I might be able to uh, break the law but, uh, just by posting this. So now I'm home. I'm not sure what to do with myself. That's uh, That agent's words when I told them the story that are going... Uh, going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Uh, Dan, finish. Anyway, I've got to go. I have some errands to run today, and then I have to go to work to pick up some tapes. My boss and I think this new guy, Jeremy, he's a complete creep, is stealing motor oil, and I have to watch the security footage to see if I can catch him doing it. I have better things to do, but my boss is paying me overtime under the table, and I'm trying to save up for vacation so I could really use the money. It should be really simple. The oil always goes missing right after his shifts. I figure I'll watch the tapes, catch him in the act, and that'll be that. Why is this Men in Black uh, bullshit? Yeah, I know. This story kind of sucks. I <laughs> it. it was kind of shit. This got to Men in Black shit. I was like, oh, It's got a like really a good story. opening and a really good premise, but it yeah, makes it's no weird. sense. The thing is, when I read this, I wanted, I really wanted to like it, but goose. there's too much that I just don't like. To quote Will, this is a Goosebumps <laughs> ass ending. It wasn't it's more than that. It's like, like you can read what you're writing, right? right? Like right. you know, <laughs> right? And there, it, there's like no rules. Like it, like it. Okay. Also, that okay, last time par- stops for like five hours, and then it's a day or however. Like, it makes no fucking sense. There's no like frame of reference. Also, just Jeremy's time loop. Right. Just it's it's Jeremy's time loop. Right. The boss called me when time started, as you usually would. Right. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. And then the FBI comes in like, oh, we got another. Like this is like some kind of secret. Once, Men in black. Once right. I heard, once I right. heard that, I was like, oh. It's oh, fucking stupid. Man. I saw Dylan's face when Dan was reading that last paragraph. I was like, this is like, Men in Black bullshit! This I, is, this is a, it starts out with a really cool premise, Yeah. and then it just falls to shit. No, once the FBI gets in, it just was like, I, I have all the credibility to the story. Yeah. I lost whatever, what the hell was going on after, like, he was, he, he said he was smiling at the camera, or whatever, I just, at first, I was like, I'm fine with that. At first, I was like, okay, this is That was is only like, spoopy part of it. <laughs> at first, I'm like, okay, this is actually gonna be like, 
maybe this guy is like in Chronicle, like has superpowers that we didn't yeah. know yeah. and stuff. And then it went to this is just a fucking man. This black is shit. this is this one is of show. this is one of those pots that rides that string line and just fucking falls yeah. flat. <laughs> no, face. it fries the string and someone snaps it just yeah. in half. Yeah, because this uh. this story again. You know what? You know what? Too the way the author author's writing it, considering the events of the story, it's and I mean I guess to the author's credit, in defense of in defense of what we're reading, it's um, it makes sense because they keep going back back in time, back in time, and repeating things. Um, but he just <laughs> just feels like he's indifferent at what's going on. He's like I was scared shitless. I don't know. He's coming in. I Even the part that I was boss. talking about where he's just like yeah, listening to all these like, things. I'm just like, I don't know. I'm the author and I'm really trying to convince yeah, you guys this like, is scary. It just sounds like boring. <laughs> like he's bored. Oh, FYI. It's like, what the fuck? I was a little high when I was doing that. <laughs> just dry oh, drop some acid before work. You know, okay. whatever. I, this, I mean, it, it was fine when it was like a four hour loop. Still weird. But fine. And then the end completely shits all over it. Because it's, it's like, wait, so then it's not... But so pretty is, much the but... opposite of strength theory for you, then. Right. You liked, you didn't like it until the end, so you liked it in general. Strength... This you liked no, in the beginning, no, no. but... I, well, yeah, I mean, I guess. Strength theory... I hate to say it was more believable in this one. Yeah. <laughs> that's about no, fucking no, it. Yeah, that's fine. That's more... It, it's more... Um, it's just it's shorter, but it's more it's more clear about what's going on. I think this is the this is the part of the podcast where I say that this is one of the more popular creepy pastas. Um, oh, it's not a bad thing. Oh, I don't Jeff think this the story. Killer fans. No, no, no. This is way better than Jeff the Killer. This isn't like that. No, no. no. Don't you dare say that. It's Jeff just, the Killer is the best. This this story wow. just <laughs> there's no in a story like this where time repeats itself. Right. right. You need an anchor point. You can't just say right. Jeremy's time loop. Right. You can't. It can't just be a thing right. that like, we're supposed to accept. Fuck. Right. right. Even with this whole. Even with again, because we just read string theory. You know, we can accept the strings. Like it's a slow. No. no, no. Like, you know what? I, it, it, a weird fucking kid stealing motor oil during a time loop. I'll buy that. But if if you're gonna do that, there has to be a reference point. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Where the time loop actually starts. This is. Okay, so it's it's four p.m. and then it becomes okay. So it's a day. Or... No, it's an hour. Well, it goes from every hour. It no, but it's a full day then at the end. No, no, no. He, he, he goes from day. No, he goes from four thirty because it keeps updating. I guess the creepy part is he is updating the same thing over and over again at four thirty-three, right? At five thirty-three, so he blacks out for five hours. That's what happens. He starts at he blacks out starting at four thirty, and then by nine thirty-three, he's back. But why is he back in the boss? Isn't why is the boss frozen? But he's not frozen. But people remember, but then they don't. No, but the final update's at ten thirty three a.m. And then no, it... no, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the section in the middle where like he's repeating it's himself. The same right. Thing he didn't like he's re- like that's his blackout moment. Those five right. hours when he blacked right. out. Right. I mean, but was the gas station haunted? And no. Yeah, but, okay, but, but what I'm but, saying, and then what I'm saying his... is, that's the reference point. Yeah. Okay. But then at the end of the story, he makes it seem like just the whole day. Or he's reliving the same day over and over and over again. And then, like, make any even, sense. even any credibility of this gas station being haunted, he mentions this thing about a, a strange sun or something. Yeah, that's out of nowhere, too. That completely... That's why I was like, as soon as I, they said FBI... And first off, the story of the house... Do a better job of researching your yeah, stories, because like, that's a st- fucking script out of WWE. No, yeah, Don't do not, that. Yeah, no, it's, please. It's, well, no, I, 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 said said that I get what I get. I get, it, I get what yeah. he's saying. It's very half-assed. It's half-assed. And it doesn't right, and it's like oh, yeah. one, one, the uh, wrestler's like story. He was an estranged son in a family, and the house burned down. Yeah. Yes, that's like Kane. what is that's like what Kane's if, story. But not even, Why, but really? not even that. Yes, yeah. What? But not even that. It's like okay, what can I? What can this guy steal? That'll be creepy. Motor oil. Uh, motor oil. Okay, but why would he steal motor oil? Uh, he was an estranged son, and he burned his family. Like it, it, it make it. It's just, yeah. It's just bad. I think. It's um, just bad. Like, I think the difference, and I hate to. I, I don't like bringing up past podcasts because it assumes that people who are listening to this are all, have also well, listened to. Well, they absolutely to. should. All right, whatever. <laughs> like, that's no, not my point. stop. My, that's not my point. My point is, I feel like 
what with the with Tesla, the guy who wrote string theory, or girl who wrote string theory, I don't know. Um, I feel like with string theory, the author knew the ending of the story and built up to it. Right. Like they had the ending in mind. I right. feel like this. He he had a, this author had a great idea. He had a very very he had a really good idea, idea. and the and the beginning is great. Mm-hmm. I like the beginning. It's, it's intriguing. Okay. I like it. No, I like it. It sets up a premise. Like I'm going to keep reading it. Right. Um. But I don't think he or she knew how to end it. Fucking you know what I mean? Like sleep experience. I mean, I feel like well, I don't know about that, but like I'm just talking about this one. I'm just saying that this is an example of something saying. where the author had a good idea at some point. But they just didn't know how to end it. Just you know what I mean? Lost it somewhere, yeah. They just yeah, like, absolutely. It's like, wait, now, wait, what? I forgot the whole why is he stealing well, money. Right. Well, see, I can relate to that because when I write something, I'm like, okay, I got a good idea going, and then, like you said, you get to the ending, you're like, how am the I The hardest gonna... part is the ending, ending yeah. Of course. Because so when I heard fun. this ending, like, the estranged son, the FBI, it's like, Oh, we got ourselves the alien on the loose. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Oh, we got. The FBI we got to sign this now. And I would say that a lot of part. the best creepy pasta, you know, the, all the best creepy pastas have the ending in mind first and built up. To right. It. I feel like instead of kind of almost improving the ending, right, and, and just hoping you accidentally write something. And good. there's and there's almost that twist. There's almost always that twist, and this twist. Just makes no fucking sense. Well, I mean, what twist There's, was there? Right. That, no that, it, that, it's a, thing. that he's reliving a full day and not just a couple hours. Oh, that's where you were going. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm saying. As cliche there's no, as it there's sounds. There's no reference point where yeah. the time loop starts. You think it's at 4 o'clock, 4 to 9 or whatever, 4.30 to 9, whatever the fuck it is. But then at the end, it's like, oh, by the way, I'm coming into the Well, here's the it's problem. Like, what? Wait, what? Here's the problem. He already... It's not him living every... Like, a day over and over again. He's living... Like a series of two or of three events. days. Right, right. It lasts for two or three days and then restarts at day one. Right. It's it like, not clear. Also, I would have just like, ended how this. How do I make this creepier? I would have ended the story as cliche as it is, saying that agent's words when I told him the story are going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Done. And yeah. Done. And then he adds this stupid thing that at the end. It would have been fine. The FBI agents is fucking stupid too, but it would have been way better than that. At least we could have been like, yeah, I think that's, you know. But, th- I mean, it breaks the whole logic of itself. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And that's the biggest problem I have with it. Like I said, in a time loop or a time jump story, there needs to be a reference point. And you think the reference point is 4 o'clock when Jeremy comes in, or whatever the fuck. Or yeah. 4 or 3 when Jeremy comes in. But then the author completely shits all over that and goes, Haha, twist! What a twist! It's actually like three days, and it ma- but it makes no sense. Because if... And, okay, time stops, but then it doesn't stop, because he's reliving multiple days, so then it just... It re- I'm so confused. Is also, it, is there's, it, there's cars on the highway driving. Right. Are they... Going in a loop? Are they right. driving home? Right. Are they like in a tape? I don't understand the pre- I well, don't no, get no, That's what I meant. I mean, like when, right. when he runs outside the gas station. Right. Which the, you know, how does physics work in a time stop? Does right. the doors open in a time stop? Is that what happens? According to sex criminals, <laughs> <laughs> in cum world it does. Oh, oh okay. Well, I had to bring it there. He calls it cum world. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, but anyway, um. No, but I'm saying that uh, you know, at one point he runs out of the gas station and he describes the you know the people in the cars. Yeah, the times times completely frozen. Like I can accept that. That's scary. I can accept that. But why is it repeating back to day one? Right. And it makes no sense. is it going to happen again? Are time, those same time stops? But then it repeats. Because imagine if then... imagine if um, you know imagine if the uh, uh, if this last paragraph doesn't happen it doesn't it doesn't exist then it's more believable that those people froze on the highway because it doesn't mean that those same people are going to be on the highway right, again right but now it is it's it's going to be the exact same thing he's going to relive he's going to relive this he's going to wake up in the gas station again he's going to see the exact same people in the exact right. same cars the ones that park along the in the gas station are going to buy the exact same things over right. and over and over again right and it's scary if it's done right and it makes no right and it doesn't make any sense i don't know because, like, when, it, when this is at the beginning of the story, when it's an isolated incident, when it's just in the store, okay, yeah. I'll buy that. Yeah. But then he goes outside, and, like, the whole world is like this. And, like you said, it, everything just resets. Oh, yeah, like anything a with days. a haunted gas station is, which I would have taken in this story, right. goes out the fucking window. Right. The minute right. that the whole world stops moving. And who, and who's, is it, Jer- who's doing it? Jeremy? 
the estranged son that's an arsonist that wants motor right, oil, right, but right. can control time. Motor Why oil. Why does he need to motor oil? Burn the house down in the past again for no, no, ever? that was in 1993. I'm saying but, that. But is this, this an guy... ar- if he's an arsonist that wants motor oil, right? But has the ability to control time. You don't need to steal motor oil. But if he's controlling time... What the that, fuck? I think brings up to the, me, that brings up the... Why isn't he robbing alien? a bank? No, but I think to me, to me that implies that he's going back far enough to burn the house down over and over and over again. I, I think oh. that's reaching. Oh, God. I think that's reaching. But no, that doesn't but, work. Nope, doesn't work because the time loop only happens in the same three days. As far as we know. But the again, the author doesn't establish rules for this fucking story, so we don't know. That's fair. There's not enough. Inf- I actually, I that actually does that doesn't sound like reaching. It sounds like that actually could be again the reason. Again, string theory had just enough information to make inferences. Mm-hmm. This has nowhere near enough information, or nowhere near enough of a concise idea of what this wants to be. It has a bunch of is. it has a bunch of really interesting ideas that don't get tied together at the end. Right, that the author feels indifferent to the, most I of see the, the potential. I like this sto- I like the idea. Right. And I don't I don't hate this story. I don't know if I hate it. I don't hate it like House of Death for God. Woo! I keep bringing That's it up another there. story where the time the time just keeps keeps coming back. Yeah but that, I mean but yeah even in the but even in that thing that we read, mm. at least in that situation, the time only seemed to stop in the house because it's the house that. Yeah, happened. nobody. Right. This is this could have you know this is a stupid name, but this is like the gas station that time forgot. The time forgot. But it's not because the whole world fucking stopped. like a shitty Twilight yeah. Zone episode. Or like, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's frustrating. No, I wholeheartedly agree. The story's not good. The story is just as bad as the name. It's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even I don't even hate the name because I I think this might have I don't know if this is a, it's probably not a no sleep it might be a no sleep because the no sleeps you know like this are post on the internet the thing with creepy pasta is it's an umbrella term mm. there's a lot of things it right. can be mm-hmm. and I see this title and think okay this is this is like a blog post style of like a this lot it's been. almost like I almost I hate to say this but it's almost like creepy pasta live like it's like you're it's happening like live. As you're well, writing it, technically it's not because it keeps looping. Yeah, <laughs> you oh, shut up. Um, yeah, that no. would be interesting if this author was self-aware of the loop and like every three days kept reposting. That would have been a way more fucking interesting story than this piece of shit. No, I'm no, I'm saying no, like, like on the wiki, oh, like outside gotcha. of like every three days. That's some serious, just for years and some years. Some serious promotional material. Just keeps posting the same story with slightly different names, like the security camera, the, the tape that I saw, the really weird tape I saw. Oh, this security tape was weird. I think the, but that would obviously the um, work. the title for this could be a little bit more clever based on the subject. Matter. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I yeah, I agree. I just don't know what I would do with it myself. I don't know. Give me give me time. I'll have an answer for you by the next podcast. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, um, Dylan and Nathan. Yeah, you guys haven't really been chiming, guys. This whole thing. I, I, I know me and I, I know me and Tan have been going back and forth. No, I, I, I honestly, it really isn't much to say. Cause like, picturing this in my head, I'm like, Men in Black. It doesn't help that it's okay, late look, as well. Forget the Men in Black thing. But look, do you like anything with the story? Do you dislike? I mean, seriously, the beginning like, was fine. The beginning was good. Like, oh, you're in a haunted. Gas station. Like, tell me, what did going. you like specifically? Like how, like we don't know. Like at first, like you don't know why. You <laughs> don't know why the time is looping. Stop it's brainstorming now. <laughs> Stop interrupting me, <laughs> sorry, motherfucker. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> anyway, how time is looping and like it's just it's weird how the time is looping and next thing you know, it's gone. He's smiling at the camera and then everything's gone. Mm-hmm. After that, it's like let's just go off the deep end. Let's oh, this is happening in real life. Right. It's, Time stopped right there. It's doing it again. It's like, why? Just yeah. why? Right. That's why? the biggest question. Yeah, why? Why'd right. you do it? Right. Right. Fair enough. Uh, Nathan? The good and the bad. Oh, God. <laughs> you read the you know, story, it's didn't you? Really, it's really late. And those of you who don't know, it's really late here. I just said it was midnight when we recorded Yeah, okay. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Shut up. It's like 12. Oh, um, shut up. <laughs> I'll give you the fuck out. It's my yeah. podcast. It's, it's my podcast. Really, it's... it's it's a whole mindfuck. I'm so, like, 
I don't like it at all. It's too much for me. I lo- the only part I liked about it was the part where he's just looking at the tapes as over the, as sort of implying the title. Oh well, yeah, and, and the, literally he's just looking at the tapes, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, uh, Jeremy just stops and looks at the camera and smiles. I thought that was the only creepy part. I thought that was the only interesting part. The rest of it was just garbage. Oh, to also, me. Uh, well, I guess he can't really explain it, but that. That, that that thing never comes back. Like I think it honestly would have been. I think it honestly would have been better if, um, like, it keeps happening. Like they're trying to catch him in the act, and like more and yeah. more. And it, it, you build up more and more weird. But for fuck's sake, guys, don't bring the fucking FBI, the right. arson, the the, the world. But I, I think stop fucking I, neo bullshit. I think <laughs> I, I think it really would have been like if they just did something with Jeremy more than just like this whole time loop thing or whatever the fuck it is i would have enjoyed it a lot more like they had story to something with jeremy that that like creepier i i would have totally enjoyed it but they went off the deep end i don't know what the hell they did with it It, it, or the author rather i just i i didn't like it i agree with me the 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 best part is the beginning where you where where there's that build right where he keeps he keeps seeing the same thing every hour he's like oh my god what the fuck's going on right and that payoff is just Mm-hmm. Okay. So also, good, um, real quick, I, I asked this with um, when I was comparing the the side characters. What do we think of Jeremy as a character? What do you think is the boss aside from the main? But I think not... the on. I think the main character's name was, by the way. I'm pretty right. sure not name. But we have boss and we have Jeremy. They're what not, do we think of those two? They're not characters. I mean, like what, like how they're used in the story. Kind of like Lucy and you know that from Straight they're Theory. Not, not really. I don't even know. The boss could have been a really again again for the five hundredth was... time. The, the boss could have been the frame of reference for Christ's sake, and it's like the boss knows that there's a time stop, but then he doesn't. But that it like nothing in the story makes sense. There's so many loose mm-hmm. ends. Yep. That he's the reason why he's a plot hole in the story to me. That's why I blocked. Yeah, him. absolutely. The boss is a plot hole to me because mm-hmm. it signifies that at what what was it like nine thirty three or whatever, wherever the fuck. Um, this, the writer, the main character, wakes up. Right. And everyone else is frozen, but he is not frozen. Right. So Why? Is this Jeremy fucking with him specifically? But how would Jeremy know that he's looking at the, maybe he saw him through the tape? Did he, like, when Jeremy, like, when he was viewing the tapes, and Jeremy looked through the camera, right. did he see him? Like, or did he, he know? Right. Is Was that, was that like an effort to foreshadow the fact that, Jer- like he, Jeremy saw him, right? Yeah. So he wanted to but fuck why? with him specifically. So he let him go first, right. and put him in this weird. Yeah. But why? And yeah. how? And 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 why does it tie? How does it tie? Right. Like, how does that work? And there's this no is, rules. And this is the story. And I picked this story because I remembered this. I remember this part. And based on the fact that we had just read String Theory, which is a similar thing where a small like one or two people. Are in a world experience, that nobody right. experienced something no one else sees, right. and then there's a way to. And that the, I think the lesson here is there's a way to do it correctly, and then there's a way to not do it correctly. Way to strategically pick stories, John. Yeah, I know. Good right? stuff. Yeah. Um, but no, seriously, that's why you're I the skillest no, of fleas. It's fucking yeah. Just, <laughs> it's fucking just one liners from Nate all the time. And Jeremy's Jeremy's not a character either. Jeremy's there, spoken. There's, an there's, there's nothing. He could have been. Right. Right. Right, and there's nothing distinct about this character. Right, there's nothing distinct about him. All we know, all we know, is that he's creepy. Mm-hmm. We don't even know if he really is controlling time. We don't. We know literally nothing. There's also this thing. Nothing. Um, and this is just a. I'm not. I'm not an author. I'm a. I'm a freaking math major. I'm not. You're the English. Author, I'm not an authorist. <laughs> but you're an English major. But there is a thing called descriptive writing. Right. And when I and when you're describing something creepy. I know I'm not asking for the kitchen sink here, but I would like to know at least... I would like to have a sort of... I guess I want to know sort of what he looks like so I can be scared. Right. Too. It's like the author saying, like, oh my god, this is so scary, but he's not letting us in on it. Right, right. It's right. like, like, the, like, why was he scary? He stared at me and he smiled. Okay, so all I'm seeing is a man staring and a smiling right. face. This but I know I don't have any other physical features to go off of to kind of... This make is, something. This is. Like, this what am I picturing here? He's this 25 is to 26. How, this is how it's scary, but why is it scary? Or like I'm going back to right, the first paragraphs right. here. I want to know like his 
his um, description is for he's Jeremy. Creepy. He's creepy. He has right. a creepy laugh. Right. He's twenty eight. He's no, sorry, twenty five or twenty six. So That's what's your it. age? We're talking about Jeremy. Yes, my age. Yeah. Um, the boss doesn't like him. The customers never complain about him. That's it. Well, That's it. Yeah, and he can nothing. fucking control time apparently. And he's a time. Tra- oh, by the way, he's an arsonist time traveler. He's an arsonist time traveler. I mean, seriously, arsonist that- time traveler is a good punk band name. Man, you should change your band name. To arsonist I'm gonna quit time my tra- band. I'm gonna start one with uh, Dan arsonist Dan. time traveler. Um. Yeah. Uh, so I think nothing else to do except go to Dylan um. with. Um, <laughs> Time for the Melinda scale. Melinda we gotta scale. come up with like a little theme song for Dylan to start these things. <laughs> Dylan, why don't you sing a theme? Song? Sorry, Dylan. But all right. Uh, so for this nameless, uh, go the you know the usual Melinda. Let's, let's, call, let's call him Fuck Nose. He loses points yeah. for being nameless. <laughs> okay. Well, no, forget that. No, that's no, fine. Being no. nameless is okay. His name is Fuck Nose. Just this this narrator because he's narrating the story. So this narrator next to Melinda. Re- no. The, the I bitch think the who author ran... is next to Melinda. No, hold on. The, no, don't make fun of the author. I've said this in the past. We don't... Fuck, yeah, no okay. Fuck the fine. But no, Melinda, keep in mind, everyone, in case you forgot, Melinda's the one who ran into a knife. <laughs> Straight up. You're yeah, sure. So, up. now, with all that being said, what? are you sure? <laughs> into a knife? You need to watch that, that he's podcast. next to... He or she. We don't even know. You know what the problem is? It's late. I Whoa, hate back up. A lot. No. She ran into a knife? No, you need to watch it. You have it. to watch We're it. We're not explaining it to you. You We're need not, to watch yeah. it. Or read the fucking story. Read the story or... But watch, watch the podcast. The, watch watch the podcast. Better. She ran into a knife. We're not asking you... We're not trying to plug anything here. We're just trying to tell Nate to watch Spoiler it. Spoiler alert. Someone put in the comments, oh, okay. did she run into a knife? <laughs> Shut up, Nate. This nameless <laughs> adversary. He... It's not an adversary. He's the main character. Protagonist. Protagonist. Neo. Neo. Call him Neo. Fuck no. So where's Neo on the moon? Just kidding. Jeremy, it was Neo. Fuck you. Jer- that's Don't true. Right. Oh, that's He's true. Right. So He's what's right. um? So is the main character Will Smith? Yes. They're going men in black here. We'll go men in black. Okay, so how, where's Will Smith? Looking like the bullets. <laughs> well, what's his character name in black? Men in black. Agent you know? J. Agent, Agent J. J. All right, where's Agent um, J? Agent J. All right, Agent J. Who works at a gas station. J. K. <laughs> For some reason, wait, the FBI can fuck it. Well, this is like, <laughs> Agent J. This is like you're confusing yourself. I know, well, right? this is now. This is going back to our last one, the string theory. Mm-hmm. He can't. He couldn't control. Well, no, that's not true. Because the way he was acting was more like, "Ooh, there's something happening." Like Dan was saying before. Like, oh, this this happening, there's this happening. I'm going to tell my boss tomorrow, see what he says, and then... This comes off as boring, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm not at full Can we just? Right. I'm not at full capacity to just, put it yeah, on the list. Just the dialogue okay, so... and the word choice. The word choice and the Agent way that J, it's I'm written. I'm sorry, just you're going to get... Considering this is a fucked... Lost end up. Considering this is a fucked up, like, scenario based on what we can comprehend, it just... Just the dialogue choices and, and the way just it's written just Can doesn't one of our seem. Viewers, please. There's no urgency to it. It's just like oh, this is weird. This is kind of creepy. The tapes are freaking out. I don't know. I'm can, gonna go to like, sleep. Can one of our viewers, like, from all this Melinda scale stuff, can you make a list? Because I've lost track. <laughs> <laughs> <Right, laughs> Everybody, <laughs> if someone wants to, yeah, they can. All right. This so, all right. So we're gonna do final thoughts, okay. and I'm gonna start by. Um, okay. Let's let's just take a minute. Maybe not even a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna rate this story. Um, I think the most appropriate rating for this story is a disappointing salad out of ten. <laughs> a disappointing. Because salad. Because you order a salad. And you're like, I want a Caesar salad. And you're at like a really nice restaurant. It's got all the parts. And and it's like, and like you see the picture of it. And it's like, man, that salad looks good. I want that salad. I want that salad. <laughs> okay. And they give you like just this thing. And it's just croutons. Oh, maybe like a little lettuce. bit of dressing on the side. Yeah. And it's like a little bowl. And you're like, man, that's a disappointing salad. It was a good concept, but man, this salad just so disappointing. <laughs> Sounds like doing a bit. <laughs> I don't know. What's the deal with the salads? The right. salads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Right. Shout out to Sun Basically, Tom. thumbs down for me on this story. Yeah. What are you going, Nate? Oh, absolutely thumbs down. Okay. I have no other thoughts. Just thumbs down. Just, just, yeah. I mean, just not a not an altogether well-conceived or well-written story, unfortunately. Because the, the premise, interesting, just doesn't play out good. Doesn't play out well at all. So... Here comes the man in black. <laughs> <laughs> the good guy's trick. I remember that. You're, you're rating this, uh, what do you, thumbs, thumbs down. down. All right. I so just this... had to put that in there. <laughs> All right. 
So this has been the Scare Your Friends podcast with myself, John, Daniel, Dylan, and Nathan. Thank you guys for being here, as always. We'll see you in the next one. So stay awesome. Good and night, always remember. John. And good night. My pleasure, John. Bye. My and always pleasure, remember John. to scare your My friends. My pleasure, John.